Oh no. Hello and welcome to the On The Slab Horror Show, the show that we bring to you each and every Friday night. Now, this week I can actually make my joke as to why, it's not even a joke, as to why we watch horror on Friday nights and why we put this show out on Friday nights, because I have one of my two and a half men back. Welcome back to the king. Thank you very uh, much. How are we? Not too bad, not too bad. How are you? A lot better than I have been, although uh, those, that gig in Sligo last week really messed up my voice, you know. It was, <laughs> next morning I was absolutely hoarse, I couldn't talk, like it was crazy. But yeah, good, all good man, thanks. Lo loved every minute of it, I'd say. Well, it, it was great to be back on stage after the heart attack, you know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, every little helps. <laughs> that's it, man, that's it. And uh, a shout out to the, the Dynamo who's not here tonight. Um, hopefully we'll have him back and hopefully we'll have the three of us back next week. Um, and we'll see where we go from there. But tonight, it's not about us. Tonight, it's about a Hollywood legend. Absolutely. A man who starred alongside the likes of Robert Englund, right alongside Will Smith. Um, and he once adorned the Freddy Krueger gear, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Uh, welcome to Mr. Michael Bailey Smith. How are you, sir? Good. Thanks, Greg. Carl, it's great for having me. Great, great introduction. I don't know about legend, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm going with legend. Yeah, I second that one, so. <laughs> if, if people have a problem with that, they can come and take it up with me, and I'll tell them where to go. He's the, he's there you the, go. I love he's it. the complaints department, and then if you, get past the, if you get past the complaints department, then you're talking to me, and that's not good. <laughs> what happens? You send a complaint in by paper, it comes in the, uh, in the letterbox, straight into the shredder. I don't care. <laughs> Um, a, just, uh, Greg, you had mentioned that Carl, you had a heart attack? Yeah, I had a heart attack last year, yeah. Wow. wow. So, uh, I'm, That's uh, good, I'm glad you're still around. Thank you. Thank so you. are we. Thank you. Us <laughs> guys uh, with bald heads got to stick together. Now you got I'm slowly getting there. Yeah, you're getting there. Yeah, you're not all the way yet. You're trying to save some stuff. It's not happening. I'm, the, I'm the only Homer Simpson on it here. He's, bald is beautiful, baby. Michael, he's one of those soulless redheads that tries to keep the redhead there, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Well, I mean, let's be fair, I, my head was, I'm that kid from uh, Family Guy that had the head turned upside down. <laughs> yeah, my hair grow, grows here. <laughs> uh, Michael, welcome into On The Slab. It's it's an absolute pleasure to have you. Um, and, um, we, you know, I was, again, I was just going, I, I couldn't believe just how much stuff you've been on that I like and that I, you know, appreciate. And... You know, people always talk about, you know, the big, big actors or whatever the case may be. Uh, but it's always the people who are in, you know, we'll say just below the, the main stars or whatever, uh, who can make a who can make a film tick. I really, I believe that so much. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, kudos to the likes of yourself and your, you know, your your colleagues and peers who make these things happen. They make the magic happen. You know what I mean? Agreed. Uh, so they call, you know, people like us working actors, right? So we go from gig to gig, you know, sometimes we'll do sometimes anywhere six, seven, eight, ten, twenty different gigs in you know, a year. Hmm. Um, and it depends if you're lucky enough. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's, there are pretty specific roles, uh, you know, big guys, big tough guys, whatever it is, uh, you know, monsters or sometimes I'm the comic foil in a sitcom because I've done sitcoms I've done you know uh, series you know episodics like I've been on uh, recurring characters on shows like Charmed or uh, Nash Bridges or a TV show way back in the day called uh, uh, Seven Days um, uh, tons of different shows I've, you know, I've just done about what uh, almost 60 films 100 episodes of television tons of commercials and print work and video games it's just it was a fun ride and i've been around the world and uh met a lot of great people that's what the good thing about being an actor you know instead of like you hop on a plane and go visit for a vacation right you might go for a week or two but if you go for two months or three months to a vacation you know like when i did the hills have eyes we were in morocco and i was there for two months you know almost two and a half months is that when i was filmed was it yeah in a place called warzazad which is uh the bottom part of morocco yeah, I have to tell you, it is the most desolate place I've ever been. I think every rock that's on planet Earth goes there for a vacation. 
it, there's a, it just rocks everywhere. It's not a big Incl- including Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure he did. Michael, um, I gotta ask you a question just before yes, you move on there. Yes, um, was was the heat in Morocco as bad as the heat in Texas? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at now in <laughs> Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. So here it's you know it's around. It stays around 100, 102, sometimes a little 106. Yeah, that's not too bad. You know, Vegas heat. If you go to Vegas, that gets like 110, 115. Oh. And Morocco filming, and I'm in prosthetics as Pluto. That was, you know, 115, 120, oh. 110 every day. Now, we were in a, mostly in a stage, you know, in a studio, but there were some moments where we were outside, and you know, it, that's that's holy crap hot. Oh hell yeah! And when you step outside, <laughs> first word is holy crap. That's what comes out of your mouth. So. Yeah. The um, speak, speaking of the hills, have eyes Alejandro Aria who directed. Obviously, the reboot of Wes Craven's um, yep. classic. Man, that got some great reviews when it came out. I remember going to see that. I think that came out in 2003, 2004, uh, no, I think. Was it, it later than that? Six, maybe? Six, 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 Sorry, six. Seven. Yeah, I remember going to see that in the cinema. And like even the opening sequence with the, with the bombs going off and then the paper clippings was brilliant but the yeah. character development even even in terms of the mutants in that was was yeah. was brilliant um yeah, it, it's it's funny in real life i mean like when we were we you know they put us in, in rock with this in this nice little uh hotel and uh, it had a big open air area as well and it's funny how they had the humans you know, would eat dinner together, and all the mutants would all, you know, eat, all the actors that played mutants would all eat together. We didn't mingle a lot, so the, pe- uh, the peasants get, get put over to one side. Yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't have a lot of interaction with you know the the family, right? Until um, and then the big fight scene was coming up between me and Aaron Stamper, and uh, he played. Uh, I think it's Doug. Played Doug in the. Yeah. The, that was a, the, That was a, an absolute. Um, that yeah. was an absolute amazing so, fight sequence. Ram Warner. Yeah. So I, I did a little trick. So uh, normally on set, you can always find someone who's the gossiper, right? He always gossips, right? He spreads <laughs> stuff around. So I went to him and I said, "Hey, I'm just gonna let you know. I oh, you point <laughs> you point to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> but so I went up to him. And I said, "Hey, man, I'm gonna tell you something." I am freaking Jack for this. I said, when, when when we do this scene in this house, man, I said, Aaron better freaking duck because I'm coming after him. I'm not messing around. And I, I said that to him. I told to him, and that's going spread around the whole set that I was after him. And then and so on the day of filming, he goes, hey, Michael, you, you know we're just acting, right? I'm like, I'm fucking acting. This, this ain't <laughs> acting no more, boy. <laughs> And of course, after I, you know, after I was laughing and I gave him a hug and things like that, I tried to scare him. <laughs> a bit. It worked a little bit, so I was pretty, I was pretty intimidating. So, and I, you know, I'll tell you what, was fun. Th- that was, uh, I was a big character as well. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's what Michael Berryman did, right? I, yeah. But when we did that film, uh, Alex Aja, the director, said, told me and told most of the mutants, do not or anybody, do not watch the first one, the original. Don't watch Good that. Call. Don't get. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't want to get influenced or taint our performance. Coming with something, you know, yours. And so that's yeah. what we did, and that's what I did. So, uh, it you know, on wheels. Like we we spoke about it on the show before, especially when we covered a twenty four hours movie X. Okay. You know when you see injuries that happen in movies where they're not like, um, say, like someone getting blown up by a bomb. Or something, but where you chopped his fingers off with the yeah. with the hatchet and that. Yeah, yeah. That's just awful to watch. Yeah. Uh, in a good way, like there are things that can actually happen. Do you know I mean? Like other things can happen as well, but like when you see things like that, or they stand on nails and things. Yeah. Like common everyday injuries to an extent, people cut their fingers off or whatever. Oh, the cringe! It's just like oh. Yeah. He's 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 actually referenced that a couple of times in discussions. That particular <laughs> thing, he hates that. Like, he likes yeah. it, but yeah. he hates it. Get me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aaron Aaron was great that doing that. So, and that axe was that wasn't a fake axe. That wasn't plastic. Well, that's what you get. That <laughs> was real. That axe weighed like yeah. fifty pounds. That was a real thing, real deal with a pick at the back of it. Um, don't so, don't miss. <laughs> yeah. So when I when I went when I went through the door 
I had to take that axe and then go diagonally and cut that door, like, you know, that glass door when it first came through? Yeah, That's it's a real awesome. door. That's real glass, everything. That was me going full, sprinting full speed. Bam, just blasting through that. You see, I trip a little bit too. Mm. Um, but that's that's the real deal. And it's funny uh, if you watch some. There's on YouTube. There's some outtakes of me doing that the first time. And it's there's the thing where I go. I don't know if I can say bad words on the show. Of course, but I'll say oh, of course, right away. And I, and I go and I got done with that. I was so fucking pumped. I go fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck. I'll I'll check that out. <laughs> there's nothing better. But I miss. I miss that. I miss. Because I used to play football, right, in college, and I play the professional football, and I miss uh, being able to hit somebody as hard as you can and get away with it. It was yeah, I love hard. I love knocking the shit out of people. I was good <laughs> at it. So sounds anyway. like it sounds like a man out to my own heart. <laughs> <laughs> like there you go. Obviously, doing doing the first one and the amazing success that came off the back of it, especially. Carl himself, there he, he doesn't he's not an over fan of reboots. I wouldn't be too big on most of them. But that was one of the good reboots. It was. was. Um, So then, like, how long was it before you got a call to come in and play in the second one? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, uh, I don't know, um, probably six, seven months, maybe six months or something like that. I don't know. Um, I Actually, what happened, so, you know who Greg Nicotero is? Yeah, Yeah. absolutely, Walking Dead. Of course, yeah, KMB, right? So famous, you know, he did Walking Dead, you know, Drex produces, and he does, you know, he's in charge of making effects. Brilliant guy, uh, good friend of mine. uh, And he was just really struck by, on first one, Hills, just how easy I am to work with, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he said I was, you know, a good actor. I'm like, oh, thanks. I always, whenever someone tells me that, because I've been told that a few times, I'm like, I'm like, me You're talking about this guy here i'm the good you know because there's always the one thing you always think you suck right as an actor you just i always do but i always think I, i'm terrible and so um uh and that kind of you know drives me to want me to be better and so i was out of the blue he calls me and he goes hey i'm in uh, i'm in the hospital right now i need you to get down to the hospital I'm like for what he goes I, I, have, I have something to show you i'm like okay so I get down there and he's in a robe. He's, I guess he's getting some procedure done. He's laying there in the bed. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna show you this. He throws like the script at me, <laughs> hits me in the face, opens the heels, heels of ice too. He goes, he goes, Wes Craven and his son went in a uh, hotel room for a week and wrote this in like one day, uh, a week or a few days, whatever it is. And just wrote it and here it is, pick a part, you're in it. I'm like, really? And I'm like, okay. And uh, I said, so I take, take it home and read it. So I took, so the role that I wanted in that was the the big guy, the Derek Mayer's character, is it? No, 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 no the other guy, the, the kind of uh, slow guy. I, oh I, yeah, yeah. So I, I I like those kind of characters, I do. Um, but then um, Marianne Magdalena, who's the producer, she calls me. I'm coming. I'm with my family at the time. We're driving from somewhere, and she calls me. Say, hey, Michael. I said, Hey, how you doing? Great, listen, we want you for the movie and we want to book you right now and get you locked in. Uh, the character you want to play is Hades. Well, I want to play this other character. Yeah, you're, you're better for the, the, the lead guy, the lead the lead uh, mutant. So I said, all right. So that's what I did. And so when I got on the set for that, he, he so in that one, I don't know if you remember the Hills of Ice 2, that character had snot coming out of its mouth, right? Yeah. There's a part where he's laying on top of the girl and a big old blob of snot, you know, whatever yeah. comes out. It's almost, so that's all my idea. So there was none of that before, but I was thinking if these guys are so inbred, right, there's so many things medically wrong with them. And mine is like, I have this mucus come out of my throat, and nose and mouth, and it's disgusting, right? So they added food coloring in it to make it kind of green, slimy. Yeah. And so it was really cool. And then during that scene when I'm, um, uh, you know, impregnating, raping, I'm gonna call it, uh, uh, the actress and she's phenomenal I forgot her I can't remember her name right now but she's phenomenal and uh, uh, I was going to say we were on top of her and you know I'm simulating the whole act and a big glob comes out of my mouth and goes right in her mouth oh. and I <laughs> and she's like this going let's keep going you know whatever just keep going. She, was, she was in it she, she's she a wanted, good she was, girl she was, she was, she was, was it yeah. Dan- Daniela Alonso Yes, she's a great actress, uh, and just a super nice person. It's funny, when I showed up on the first day, uh, 
it's like you know you get there at the hotel you know um and then in the morning time they have a like couple of vans waiting for you to take you off to the set right and so marianne says do not be nice to anyone period I, you're a super nice guy <laughs> drop all that i want you to be hades i want you to sit in the back of the van and you don't say anything and i go why he goes because she goes i really need to get these these soldiers that are playing all the military people uh, scared, like literally scared. I said, okay. I said, okay. So I've had this, I, people have asked me to do this before in other uh, movies. Uh, and so I sit in the back, I'm like this, you know, my neck bowed, I'm like this, and just not saying anything. And then she gets in and she goes, hi, how are you? My name's, you know, and, and uh, I turn to her, looks at me, and I go, But basically, I said, and I didn't say anything. She's like, <laughs> turned away, and went. She's like, holy shit! And so, I for the longest time, I didn't say anything to anybody, and they were scared because they knew <laughs> because they heard about me. And you also can't get you can't get that on your head because you go to the cafeteria at the at the Warzazat studio. There is a on this seventy foot wall in the cafeteria a picture of Pluto, you know, from the first one with the axe. On from painted on the wall, it's huge. That's that's the the shadow figure, is it? Where you can you can't see any detail. It's just him. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah that one. It's just badass, and it's yeah. like cause I remember when I came back the second one, I'm like, holy crap, that's me. You know, that's that's cool. So that's awesome. I actually I picked up a copy of Hills of Eyes when it came out, and that's the cover of the front of it. So it doesn't have the normal cover art. It's that cut picture of Pluto standing in the doorway. And I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. Um, like, I, I enjoy the Hills Have Eyes one and two. Um, they're great fun. There's some great death scenes in it. Um, I'm working obviously alongside Derek Mears and all in the second one. Um, I love Derek. Yeah, he's Derek's a super nice dude. You know, there are, there are great people. On, there's there's crappy people in Hollywood, and then there's great people in Hollywood, and he's he's one of the great people. Just a great a pleasure to work with. He's a super nice guy. During that during that filming, he and I had a fight scene, and I accidentally I nicked him. Um, I think on his nicked him on his nose. I was thrown. I got a little too close. You know, when you get sometimes you get you get you get a tussling around. Sometimes sometimes you you know you get a little too close, and I felt so bad that I nicked him. I never touch anybody. You know, I've been punched many times. Von Donald's broken my nose. I've been punched by every inner brother and kicked in the balls and everything else. And no thanks. <laughs> Uh, Urkel, Urkel on Family Matters beat me up and kicked no me. Kicked me nailed, he nailed me in the balls. And I'm like, what the hell? Even Urkel's kicking my ass. That's something so, to say, uh, isn't it? Urkel kicked your ass. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm gonna put that on my tombstone. That fight, that fight scene is obviously when you just have Missy in the room, and yeah. uh, he's trying to assert dominance or something, and he slaps yeah. her in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I, I, I beat him down like a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Derek Mears is a big man, though. <laughs> yeah, but in real life, in real life, he's he's a he's a good martial artist, good, good athlete. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I did I did try and get him on, but uh, man's probably too busy. <laughs> yeah, he's a good good dude. Yeah. Michael, um, can, I, can I just ask you quickly? Um, what role did you prefer playing? Just before we move off Hills of Voice, did you prefer playing Pluto or Hades? I mean, which was more, you know, satisfying for you? I, I liked Hades was kind of as an actor you want to have you know valleys and peaks in your character you know it really helps it, it's great to play those kind of characters and, and valleys and peaks and emotion and things like that yeah Hades was kind of just you know I'm kicking ass going through I'm the big bull you know that's it uh and it, those fun roles are fun to play, but Pluto, to me, was more uh, as an actor better. I didn't have a lot of dialogue with that. I had some dialogue, but the great the emotions. I went from you know killing the killing the scientists at the beginning, throwing them around to you know everything else, and and, and killing the gas station guy and dragging yeah. him or the dad, you know, in the tree, the trailer scene, which was serious stuff. And that baby is as great as I. I almost, you know, babies are a lot like your, <laughs> I hate to say that, like your pet, 
Like your pet will love you unconditionally, right? So it doesn't matter what you look like. You can be the ugliest dude in the world. You can be the prettiest, it doesn't matter. They all treat you the same. They love you. Babies are the same thing, right? Until they get older and then they, they learn, oh gosh, he's ugly. Or, <laughs> you know, that's what happened. Hey, but they're, at the beginning, they, so I'm dressed up as, I'm dressed up as Pluto. That baby loved me. <laughs> I'm holding the baby and he's in the baby's little girl and she's reaching and most even tempered little baby ever. I'm holding the girl and the parents were off camera of course. I'm holding her and he's she's reaching up touching my face. <laughs> you know, unbeknownst to everybody we're gonna go and eat her later, but yeah. you know, but you know, it is kinda cool. So uh, yeah, it's that so I love those kind of arcs, you know, going from being totally vicious to being like childlike, being vicious again. Yeah. You know, to like Again, the whole thing, like in the in this in the, the house scene, like goes to the wall on this vicious thing, and then when I get stabbed in the foot, it's like you know, lit up that big scream, and yeah, a lot of really cool stuff. I like that. I like that. No, just you just said something there that that may validate an argument that I was having with someone the other day, and <laughs> um, someone put it up on one of the horror pages. No, and you'll say me having an argument with somebody. That, that never, doesn't happen. Never. Um, so they were talking, we uh, Hills of Eyes came up now, I never mentioned as you were coming on, um, but the debate happened as to who takes Big Bob outside the garage. Do you know All you see is the face in the mirror. Yeah. And, uh, garage? Yeah. So when he goes yeah. back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, so he burned on the tree, and next thing you know, we're dragging him into the, the that part there. Yeah, burned no, him. no. So who takes him? Johnny gets into the car. I yeah, I don't. It wasn't you, was it? I don't, no, I don't. No, no, no. Damn. <laughs> I'm thinking. I, I I'm trying to think what part I'm gonna have to look at so, again. So you know, you know when the the trailer runs off the road and he heads back to the oh. petrol station. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, and. Uh, your man, your man shoots himself in the face, yeah, and then he gets into the car, and it's the daddy scene. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's what's his name. That's not me. That's uh, the guy, the gentleman who's passed away now. Um, oh. He was in uh, what do you call it? The FBI movie um, back in the day. Uh, Carl, we may, we may, we may need to edit this out because uh, <laughs> yeah, I may, I may have lost this battle. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so that's, uh, that, that's, uh, that's the, uh, what's his name, uh, Hopper, no, um. Oh, Dennis Hopper, is it? No. No, no, not Dennis Hopper. Here, I can, let me look it up for you. Yeah. Hold on. Um, you know, I, 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 I thought it was you. No, 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 I have a crazy story Damn. about that. <laughs> um, well, that may kill my argument there, so good thing it was a couple of days ago. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, no, that that really was a really intense movie. I like, and you were saying that was filmed in Morocco. That looks remarkably like a desert that you'd probably see in in Vegas or somewhere along that. Yeah, no, I haven't, you know, I haven't I mean, made it there. I mean, so the funny thing about that is that I'm, I'm looking up the cast. Oh, here we go. Um, Uh, that we built this gas station, right? Oh, uh, Billy Drago. Oh, so yeah. So Billy Drago was in the back. So, oh. in the car. So, well, um, I lost that, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, that gas station was, uh, you know, we built on the side of the Moroccan Road. There were people stopping by from trying to get gas. <laughs> that Brilliant. That was pretty funny. Right. And then, I, then I told this story on just Facebook recently. Um, once there was a there's a couple guys from Morocco that are crew guys that still I keep in contact on Facebook and they sent me some pictures and there's and there's one shot of me at on like a re remote location where we kill the miners and setting that whole shot up and things like that at the beginning but they the base station base camp is away you know, like maybe 10 miles away and so uh, they just and for the, the killing the miners it was just me out there and then with the crew and so they had me, uh, you know, done with the makeup effects at the base station, and then they just threw me in a old beat up Toyota and drove me ten miles across the desert, you know, to this location. So we're driving along, and I'm in the front seat as Pluto with his <laughs> walking driver, just he and I, and we're driving along, driving along. I'll come to this small town, and we had to slow down because this huge, like, 
heard a sheep come across the road. And there's this guy, literally, looks like he's, you know, he looks like he's out of the, the book, he looks like Moses with the robe and the stuff and the whole situation. And he's doing the thing and he's herding the sheep. He looks over and his eyes get like this big. And he throws his staff up in the air or he runs off into this small town screaming. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny that happened. So I, that guy's probably still in some kind of therapy. So the make got the desired effect. Basically. Yeah, yeah, it did. So it's yeah. funny. Michael, can I just ask you one more thing? Um, yes. Have like you know the way you were saying the director said not to look at the original film. Yes. So did you did you then afterwards after the fact go ahead yep. and, and what did you think of? Uh, did. You did. I, I I think you did a really really great. Oh yeah. Pluto, I have to say. It's a it's a different type of Pluto, right? Yeah. It's different. Michael Michael Berryman, Michael Berryman is a legend, and yeah. and he's brilliant in everything he does, and he's a super nice guy. I met him. We went to go autograph signing in Amsterdam. Cool. And I met him there. I mean, he and I hung out, uh, and we were in London. We hung out, had dinner that night uh, awesome. before we left for Amsterdam. Great guy, super nice some guy. Stories, I'm, I'm this, some yeah. stories there, I'd say, between the two years. Oh yeah, he's just oh. he's just a great guy, great guy. So yeah. So, I, th I think we've t we held on to the Hills of Eyes quite long enough. I think we, we might move on to some of the other back catalog. One that I remember, and it, it, it's horror esque, wouldn't say overly horror, was working alongside Van Damme in uh, in Hell. Yes. Um, this was an out there movie that Van Damme decided to do because it was a lot darker than a lot of his movies. Um, how is it to work alongside Van Damme? Now, I'm not saying like uh, the reports that I read is that he can be abnormally hard to work with. No, I he he was totally fine. I had no issue with him at all. Um, That's because uh, he broke your nose. He did break <laughs> my nose. Uh, oh, what happened? I'm not saying a bad word about that man. <laughs> yeah, th there's there's uh, some questions on why that happened, but I'm not going to get into that nope. here. But but. Um, well, let's just say that I became pretty popular on the set, so uh, everybody loved me, and so uh, which is kind of cool. I mean, all the Bulgarian, you know, crew and extras, all that stuff like that. So it's funny because when I, when I, even I did this for Hills of Eyes. When I get ready for a scene that I, like really intense, that I had to freaking either go through something or beat somebody up or like just it's a series of actions that I have to do that just you know you become out of your, out of body but still in control. I just let out a big like fuck. Motherfuck. And then I, I just freaky do it. So I had to, I did like some, I had some big fights in this, in this film. And the last one with Van Damme was, uh, was tough. It lasted a long time. We had days doing this. Um, and so, you know, I'm, you know, my body is beat up from football, right? So playing college football, I have bad knees, bad shoulders. My neck is jacked up, and, you know, and I'm going at this 90 miles an hour with Van Damme, and we're make, trying to make this as real as possible without getting each other hurt. And, uh, but there was a lot of pieces to be rehearsed and built on it. And he's, you know, he's a hard worker. Um, we went, I went to his hotel a couple times and we would work out like on the, on the uh, you go, Michael, okay, we're going to do this, and I'll do this, and then you duck here, and whatever. You know, all that stuff like that. It's all the choreographing. Yeah, a oh, oh, whole fight scene, yeah. So he's he's really great at that. And he works hard. He's he's a good he's a he's talented for sure. And that's why he's Von Dom, right? So they, they don't you know, people like that don't get there just hand it to him, right? So he's definitely talented dude. Um Yeah, so uh yeah, so I I had no issue with that at all. It Bulk yeah. is a beautiful place. If you ever wanted to find a Wife that's a supermodel, that's the place to go. I'm so, not, I, I, was, I'm, I was married at the time, so I couldn't do anything, but there were a lot of people that were, and it was kind of, I was like, oh, have fun. I'm, okay. I'm, already, I'm already married. One's enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michael, I mean, as we said earlier on, you have some back catalog of work, you have a really, really impressive body of work, you know? And uh, Thank you. yeah, absolutely. Just, I mean, before Greg Blue was loud there with uh, the Hills of Oils, I was <laughs> gonna ask, what got you interested in acting? Uh, you know, did you go to acting school or what was? Give us a little yeah. brief history on 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 Michael 
from stuff. Yeah, I have not. I did not. I now I to get into it. I did not. So uh, that probably makes a lot of people mad. But, oh, no, I don't need to get into that. Oh, I'm staying my ass off. You know, whatever. But <laughs> so I mean, listen. I'm six foot four at the time. I weighed two seventy five. I had about nine percent body fat. You know, less than that. I was ripped. Um, and my arms are like 23 inch arms, 50, almost 60 inch chest. You know, I could bench over 500 and squat over six. I'm just, I was a big dude, you know, and I was an athlete, right? So coming from professional football, you know, and college football. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, people always told me, oh, you got a great, great look. You know, you should go be the next Schwarzenegger or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to be the next Michael Billy Smith, that's why I want to be, you know, and so I, I didn't want to, but I, I appreciate what, you know, he's done, and of course, and all his work. Of course. Um, and so, you know, I, so after college, I, uh, I mean, so after the, the Cowboys, I went, Dallas Cowboys, I went back to college, finished my degree, fell in love with some girl, chased her out to California in San Diego, and when I was there, and then she dumped me after a month or so. Uh. That's a funny story, but she dumped me for a bald guy. I was, I had hair back then, I was good looking, what the hell? Where anyway, are um, yeah. <laughs> all guys are king. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, uh, but I, I would work out at Gold's Gym in Venice, and I befriended this guy named Steve Henneberry, great guy. Uh, he later became one of the American Gladiators. I remember that TV show. Yeah. Uh, great guy. Um, I remember he, Wolf. He's, <laughs> yeah, he still competes in bodybuilding. And uh, so he and I befriended each other, and uh, he used to go up, and he was Conan in the Universal Studios action adventure Conan TV you know, show I mean not TV yeah. show but the, the live action show that yeah, we yeah. give for tourists right we go cool. to Universal and and so uh, he and I would go out and have beers and you know, drink whatever on the weekends or and stuff like that and we, he and I we tra became training partners we trained you know really hard and, uh, did some guest pos guest posing appearances at bodybuilding contests and had some fun and, and he was going up to Los Angeles to, it's about two and a half hours away, to go read for this film. He said, hey, why don't you come with me? Maybe you can read for this too. And uh, I said, all right. So I was debugging software for Xerox, which I hated. I'm not a cubicle person. <laughs> you will never catch me in a cubicle. Or, you know, I, I, I apologize for anybody who's ever been to a cubicle. I have a lot of respect for you for eight hours a day doing that. And so um, I, my boss says, you can't take off work. I said, well, I'm taking off anyway. and can't stop me and so I went up for the day we went up to we drove up together uh, and went on the Hollywood 101 you know the famous 101 freeway and saw the Hollywood sign the audition was literally on sunset and uh, sunset and vine yeah and you saw the Hollywood you see the walk of fame all us and we went into this building and it was for the movie called Nightmare on Elm Street you know part five played a bigger version of Freddy Krueger called Super Freddy and they ah, yes. let him read first, and then later on, you know, they got done up weird, and he says, hey, do you want to audition too? And I, I said, okay, I'll audition. And went in and met the director, his name is Stephen Hopkins, pretty well-known guy. Yeah. He asked yeah. if I had Good seen Freddy Krueger movies. Yeah, so he asked me if I'd seen any Freddy Krueger movies, and I said, yeah, of course. And he said, well, we need this big guy that can laugh and be scary, and all this stuff like that, and so, I out this big laugh. And, that's fucking awesome. Guess what? You got yourself a job. <laughs> and that's kind of how it, that's kind of how it started. So uh, I quit my job at Xerox, and after and I went up there and did the movie for two weeks, and then I lived in my car, realizing, holy shit, I need to make a living. So I lived in my car for a couple of weeks, and uh, finally got an apartment with some some crappy apartment with some creepy dude. Left slept on the floor. Uh, in the back room on the floor with this blanket and my stuff. I was back in the day. I was so proud uh, that everything I owned I could fit in the back seat of my car. <laughs> so that's I was so proud. I was very mobile. Um, as a guy, you know, that's what you do, right? Of course, so, yeah. Absolutely. And like, then so I just made my way. I got a job at this computer test laboratory place. It was flexible, allowed me to go off do auditions, and at nighttime, four day, four nights a week, you'd find me in acting class. And that's where I was. I trained at Gold's Gym in Venice. And I went to the acting class every night. I did scene study, in, uh, scene study, improv, cold, cold reading, audition techniques, theater, everything possible. I did. Um, so and, you've earned your you've earned your stripes, so to speak. Oh, Absolutely. Trust me. When I st I had no manager. I had nothing. Uh, I I remember um, 
I, I had one manager and he says, okay, don't think I'm weird, but uh, do you wanna, do you wanna sit outside this gay bar in a life tower, lifeguard tower in a tank top and shorts for like 500 bucks for the evening and just letting people in? I go, 500 bucks, hell yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, I did. Absolutely. So, and I also got a lot of dates out of it, even though I didn't pick anybody up on it, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, right. but that's, you just gotta hustle. And then I, then I had an agent and my agent said, I'll take you on if, if you drop off submissions to all the casting directors. So I, I would be at his office at seven o'clock in the morning and I would go for two hours, hustle my butt in my car and drop off all these actor submissions to all these different places for all his actors. Did that every day for a year, you know, just trying to make my way. And then, you know, while I was working on my job and then I, then I finally get an audition here and there. And then I left him and got to a manager who was phenomenal. She was my manager for the rest of my time. There's Melanie Sharp at Sharp Talent. She was freaking, she's great. And I still love that woman to death. And so, uh, yeah, great lady. That's what, like, that's what kind of helped me. They, you've, you've touched on, obviously I said it in the intro, you got to play Freddy Krueger. You were probably the only other person to play it, other than Robert Englund, to an extent. Well, yeah, and then there's the remake too, right? So the, the, that gentleman, yeah, he we, did. We don't you know, count so, that yeah, We don't talk about that one. Yeah. <laughs> No offense to Jackie. No offense to Jackie and Haley and, and the rest of the people in that, but uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm no, no. I, yeah, I have to tell you, when I won the award for the best fight scene for the uh, Bangoria Chainsaw Awards televised show, um, my speech that I gave when I got up there, I, you know, I said, and Robert Ingram was there uh, during the the award show. I said, you know, if Robert wasn't as gracious as he was. I probably would never become an actor because he was so nice to me, so open. I invited me into his trailer. I still remember that to this day, like it was yesterday. He invited me into his trailer. And we sat down, talked about him playing Freddy Krueger and what he thinks, you know, Super Freddy should do and all those things like that. So I took all that. Trust me, when I got in front of that camera, I was scared shitless. Oh, it's safe, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I mean, like, is said action? Okay, I think that means I can start talking now. <laughs> or start doing my thing, you know. I wasn't that bad, but it was pretty bad. And, that's, that's and I got a... my SAG card out of it. So I got a oh, nice. union from that car. I mean, and my first love scene. Did you know that? No. What? No. <laughs> yeah, Dude. so you, yeah, come on, you do your homework. I'm just kidding. Um, so no one knows, <laughs> hardly anybody knows this. Um, so I'm sitting on the set, right? And I'm waiting, getting, I'm gonna go into prosthetics, you know, for Super Freddy in a, you know, a couple, couple hours I would like getting there early because I, I love to I love because it's my new time my you know, first time on a set I want I love the that process of filmmaking the every working together collaboratively and you know building sets and camera ready and shooting things and all, I love my sister just just give me a chair let me sit there and just watch you know I would just do that I'd sit there all day instead of going to my trailer I hate going to my trailer you would never throughout the whole time I was an actor hardly would you ever find me in my trailer I'm always on the set I just love the process that, that's what we've touched on with uh, a couple of other people as well. Like you learn from watching others doing things. Yep, yep. Like, the, um, like we had an interview with, or I done an interview with um, Jeff Seaman there a couple of weeks ago, and he said it as well, bringing veteran actors on and watching what they're doing can only well, I, make you better. I Yeah, I try to steal as much as I can. That's what, what they do. And uh, so I was sitting there, wait, just watching, and all of a sudden I look over and I see the casting director there on the set. I thought it was kind of strange and I saw the director and they're talking 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 I look over to me talking 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 I look over to me again I'm like and then the director comes over to me and he goes and with the cast are hey Michael um, what would you think about doing a love scene and I'm like what uh, super Freddy and they go no no so the premise of this film is called dream child so Freddy comes back through the lead the lead actresses baby when she gets pregnant that's how yeah. Freddy comes through the, the the baby so she needs to get pregnant well we need to have a love scene and we were thinking we need someone with a great physical body and that's you uh which i i said do i get paid for this you go he goes yep i said sign me up Brilliant. i'm so, all in <laughs> so next thing you know i'm i'm you know i'm i'm naked except for a, a cloth color cloth color colored loin you know a loin cloth thing and i'm on top of the the, the woman who's uh uh, the you know, double four actress, and I'm like, 
wow, this is this is Hollywood. I kind of like it. <laughs> that so, was your that was your first film. You probably thought it was the, <laughs> like, this is gonna be amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. pretty cool. That's um like that like Fred, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, is the first the original Nightmare on Elm Street is the first horror film that I've ever seen. It's my favorite horror film, and I, I love the rest of them. Yeah. Like the like apart from the twenty ten one again. No offense <laughs> if so if you're friends with Jackie L. Haley or whoever's yeah. in it. But yeah, no. But I'm gonna give you some trivia. So did you know I played two roles in the Van Damme film in Hell? Valencia. And is it yeah, the prison guard? Yeah, no, not the prison guard. No, I don't know who the one is then. So, uh, remember at the beginning of the film, the big guy with the mask? Yeah. The, the mask, he, well, that guy was actually, that guy broke his ankle, that first take. They couldn't use him again. He broke so it his first crazy. take. And so, so they had to, so they had to figure out, they had to figure something out. And so, uh, when it came to the whole prison scene inside there, when the big guy in the mask had to fight or was going to go after Van Damme and you know the whole, the whole scene there, they come to me and say, hey, Michael, would you want to play this other role? I go, do I get paid a little extra? And he goes, yeah. I said, okay, I'm in. I wouldn't have done it anyway. They didn't know that. <laughs> they don't so even know I, that. <laughs> so, so I the played the fifth on that. <laughs> so I'm 6'4", and they put on like five-inch heels, boots with five-inch heels on things. And then so I, I end up doing that whole thing with uh, in those five-inch boots. So... So you're, you're the best part of, what, 6'10 at that stage? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's mad. Um, like, obviously, you were entrusted with Freddy Krueger, who, as a time, Robert Englund was the only one to do it, up until the new one. I know someone else done it, um, parts of it in, in Freddy's TV show. But, like, how cool must that be to say that you were a part of the original Freddy Krueger and I'm the only person to play him in, in the first five movies other than Robert Englund? It's it's a great honor. It is. You know, I have a action figure um, like I do with uh, Charm. You know, I have an action figure from that. Um, and I have people with tattoos of me on their body, wow. which, is, which is pretty remarkable. For Charm, for Hills of Eyes, for, for Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, and so it's, it's just really a, an honor that the characters I played have made such an impact on people that they actually want to put a tattoo that they can't <laughs> it's on there uh, for the rest of their life or at least until they get it lasered off but, I, yeah. I do have a Night Ride Elm Street tattoo but it's not super Freddy <laughs> okay uh, we're not talking anymore just kidding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no but like to, to make an impact on people like that it, it really shows the how good the body of work that you've done is um, and like I, when I said legend on, at the start, I, I, I genuinely meant it. And like, well, thank you. It's that. Um, to go on from that, like it's how you just keep going from role to role and knocking out a practice. You don't cast. You're attributed to 101 acting credits on IMDb. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like it, it genuinely must show that you're either a nice guy, really good actor, or both. And, and judging by the conversation we've had today. And over the last couple of weeks, I'm going with both. Oh, thank you. I, yeah. You know, there's some credits that aren't on there. That they're missing. I need to get that updated. Wow, but, get that started, but, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, it's 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 been a fun ride. It's not over. You know, for sure. I got more stuff to accomplish. You know, like uh, like I mentioned before. You know, I, I I've written about ten screenplays, and I love I love writing. Um, I love creating characters. I love creating worlds. I love I always try to answer the hardest questions, you know, like one script I wrote is, you know, trying to answer the question, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, if God is all powerful, all knowing, and all, you know, graceful and, you know, all those things like that, gracious and those things like that, how, how, why does he let like little kids die and things like that? And that's a tough question to answer, right? And so I've, did, I've written, did you answer? yeah, so that, that screenplay is called Black Moth. It's uh, it's got the Antichrist in it, uh, and it's nice. it's wrapped around action. It's like, it's like uh, yeah, it goes from point A to point point B, ninety miles an hour. It's a badass. With, I'm in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty cool. Got some, you know. And what other like, uh, screenplays, Michael? 
have you recently done that you'd like to tell us about actually yeah i just had one thank you for that carl i just had one that was uh option that means that you know producers uh read it liked it and they, they bought it acquired the rights to it yeah thank you sir um and it's called my good boy um and that one is uh it's it's a bit about some of the things that happened in my life you know i've written all these screens so there's a gentleman of mine a friend of mine his name's carter fisk uh he used to be a, a creative executive at disney and he he left that now he's a real estate mogul in austin texas multi-millionaire that's a, that's guy. a change <laughs> yeah but he's first everything he does is successful he's a great mma fighter too uh which is kind of cool um but he you know he he's a big fan of my writing and he said you know michael i love all your scripts but you should write the script that hasn't been written yet i said what i said which one he said about you and what you know your, your life story i said i don't know if i want to write that one because you should i guess it's the best one and so um i sat down and over like a uh, maybe four days wrote it i cried the whole way through you know and that was the the original piece and then uh from there i massaged it and, you know i've been I, that one i worked on for probably off and on for a few years and then uh about a year ago um i, I well let's back up so about 10 years ago about, oh, about 10 yeah about 10 years ago i did a movie for a gentleman uh, by the name of david jeffrey uh tv producer done tons of different things and and uh, he and uh, he called me out of the blue and says, "Hey, uh, Michael, remember when we were on the set? We were talking about some of your writing. He goes, just send me one of your scripts, man. Maybe it was good enough. Let's do it." And so I sent him uh, my good boy, and uh, he loved it. And uh, he said, "Let's." And so we worked on it for a little longer, and he optioned it. So now it's going to go into production uh, in next year. Awesome. So, yeah, so the premise of it is just basically, you know, how I got this idea is that, you know, you always watch these, you always watch these movies about Al Capone or these big gangsters, right? And you always see the, the right-hand man or the left-hand man, you know, standing there. Well, how did that guy become a left-hand man, and the right-hand man? How, how did he become like that? Well, what events in his life? And I, and after, so, and then, so I looked at that then I looked at my life, and when I played for the Cowboys, you know, I was there for a few months, I blew my knee out, and I was left with nothing. And so I got mixed up with some bad people. I went from bouncing at a bar to doing a lot more things. That, okay. And then, but I had, I, and I was so good at it, I got too famous and to the point where I had people that wanted to make me stop breathing. So, and, you know, you get shot at and stabbed, and, and all these other things happen, you know. You see good people get killed in front of you and all that and you're like uh yeah it gets crazy so it's it's and it's about trying to stop the cycle you know having your kids go through that same thing and letting anger take over and i think it's pretty relevant in today's world right where you get these kids that you know grab a gun and go shoot up something or whatever you know and so it's just about that and trying to stop all that so um that it's called my awesome. good boy and and we will we will see what happens you know so uh, it'll probably it'll take a, it'll probably take a few months to shoot, and then production will be another six months. And so, hopefully, maybe 2024, we'll have something in the theater. Michael, if if we're still going at that stage, we'd absolutely love to have you back to talk about that. And oh, absolutely. Well. well, how about this? I just invite you guys to the premiere. So oh, we'll have a premiere in uh, in Dublin. I think that's a great idea. We have a lovely we have a lovely cinema here called uh, the Savoy. That's an old, that's where all the old. Uh, premieres used to go on, so I mean, we'll book yeah. it for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's pretty cool. There's there's some interesting stuff about that. What I wrote to um, that only people that ever ever looked into a man's eyes, either when they're fighting them, or <laughs> when a gun is pointed at your, you know, at their face. Mm. There's a look someone gives you that's you're taking like a part of their soul. And uh, my script has that kind of that's, stuff in it. That it is a film that that's it, that quotes from, isn't it? I, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just going by or, or something it. similar to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but obviously it had to come from somewhere um, in terms of no, movies. Like, so someone obviously came across with it. Now I'm not saying that you're you're quoting the movie. No, but there's like uh, I mean, my I, you know 
you know, I've talked to like my buddy who's an MMA fighter because I, I went from my experience when I played football, you hit a guy so, you know, so hard right before you hit them, they give this little look to you and now you own them. You can see that dude like six, six months from now walk down the street and he knows what he gave you. Yeah, he gave you a part of his soul, man. That's what. That's happened. that's Billy. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's as intense as you can get in life. It really is. Oh, I agree, and Billy. To be able and to I... to be able to experience that sort is, you know, it's past anything I could even comprehend. And oh, yeah. uh, for you to be able to bring that into a screenplay and then forward on, you know, that's you know, that's a big thing, sir. That really is a yeah. big thing. And and. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I fully on. I, I'm not really into those type of movies, but I would fully go and watch that. You should. You you have fun. It's it's, it's fun. It's actually a fun movie. Yeah, there's there's some parts in it that are kind of raw and in your face, but there's a lot of fun stuff in it. A lot of. Fun I mean, stuff like, and obviously, you said it's inadvertently based on your own experiences. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's loosely based. You know, any movie, right? It's oh yeah, it's a lot more exciting than in real life. So. But then again, to say like we've had a conversation here for an hour and we've been talking probably for a week. Do you know what I mean? To say yeah, I know that person, not know you, know you, but like we've been in conversation, and then this movie is some of his life seen on the on the screen. Like, yeah. will well, be. You know, I I grew up being picked on and beat up. I grew up having to find a new way to the, the school bus because there are dudes waiting for me every freaking day. So yeah. so then I used football to get back build to get that respect and then all of a sudden yeah. you get you know this you get to the point of you're right there everything you ever wanted and you've worked for your whole life is gone in a second what yeah. do you do yeah, do you, do you, yeah. yeah it's tough to overcome there's so many right. athletes that went through that professional athlete you're playing you know your your football you know which is our we call it of course soccer but yeah. your football american football you know, just baseball players, no matter what it is, man, it just ends, ends all the yeah. time. And you see athletes all the time trying to come back, you know, unretire, like Tom Brady. I retired, I didn't retire. You don't want to give it up. They don't want to give it up. We don't, we don't talk about Tom Brady. <laughs> not not being a Broncos fan, anyway. Yeah, yeah. but it's true. Uh, being, yeah. you know, when you have to give it up and you're forced to give it up, you, you go through bouts of depression and all this. That's of course. Like, and I, I fully believe that that's what happened with Gronk. Coming back to Tampa. Oh, did he come back? He came back last year. Yeah. Yeah. Did he get, was he gonna come back again? No, 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 no. But John Wayne really retired from the Patriots, and he came back. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, of course. Um, but like, I, I fully believe that it's things like that that happen. Um, but yeah, sport is one of those things that you get chewed up and spit out so quickly, and uh, you can fully understand what it does to a person's mindset. Hey, I have a. Um I don't like know. Uh, I have some homework for you guys. Uh, you need to go find a movie if you haven't seen it yet called Monster Man. I've seen it. You seen it? Two thousand three. Yeah. Is that when it was? Well, it, that's that's when it came out over here. Yeah. Yeah. So I played uh, Fuckface. I was. Love. <laughs> I mean, you know that right? It, it, it's called. It's it's just credited as uh, Monster Man now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But that's but in the in the movie they call me fuckface so that's all that's my character. Is that I, what you I, do? Is it in the film? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So so but um, uh, I films like that I love because even like Charm, Charm to play four different characters on Top Charm that TV show, and it's funny people that know it's the same guy playing those four different characters. Or like Monster yeah. Man, I, that the way he moves, you know, I kind of a lot of times when I when I when I move and things like that, it's very informed by. That's how it's, my characters are formed by their movements, their hands, the way they walk, they talk, and all that. I love creating those characters like that. So. Yeah, you know, I do. I do think it's worth um, it's worth rewatching for me. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Um, it's the one with the monster truck, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah the monster truck. I actually didn't yeah. drive it. I wish I did. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah I remember that. The, it's the big red one, isn't it? The black on it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think Red it's, Black? um, it's British, it's like rusted out, yeah, that one. Yeah. And then, but th I love the fight scene in there where I'm like, he stabs me in the eye with a pencil, you know, oh. and then I'm like, you know, I, the other one you can't see, so I'm in the house trying to kill him, and I'm going, I can smell you. <laughs> it's, and I do, I, I think, um, like, I know, I know that's a, a horror film, but, like, that, mask that you have on it's like the sack that scarecrow wears for in batman mm. 
um, a very Jason Jason esque from Friday Two, um, and then it obviously has the stitch in here. It's half stitched in it. Now it's all wired. So, cause the, the the back story is that uh, you know I was chasing somebody, went through the windshield, and my monster truck outside, messed up my face. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's a good movie. I might I might actually uh, try and locate that. Yeah, and give it another rewatch and get back to you about it. Yeah. All right, I like it. Uh, Michael, I, I think I, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just kind of I know you, you know we've been absolutely blessed with your time. I have to Thank say, you. absolutely. But just. I, I know we could talk with you all day, and uh, maybe again you can come on another time and, and have another discussion because I've I've absolutely loved this discussion with you, Michael. I have to say. Thank you, sir. I appreciate. It. No, it's all good. Thank you. I, yeah. I'm blessed. Uh, thank you. I'm blessed. You guys. Absolutely. You know, think worthy of me to have you on your show. So, I appreciate so oh, absolutely. What I'm, what I'm gonna do is before you go, okay? And and I, as I said, I am aware it's fine. Uh, give me your three favorite roles you've pl- or films you've done or, or, mm. or TV shows, whatever you like, and they don't have to be in order. And then give me your three favorite movies that you haven't been in, if you can. If I haven't been in? Mm. Yes. Oh, uh, sheesh. Uh, Pressure's on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my three favorite ones that I, that I, that I uh, like. Um, Bills of Eyes. I love that. Um, there's a comedy called Master of the Skies with Dana Carvey. Okay. That's one time. such a funny movie. Yeah, so I great I did a great great job in that, which is really fun. Um, uh, which I thought I did, and then uh, another movie that I did, uh, Hills of Eyes. Um, uh, well, I guess it would be a TV. There's some, some TV, There's more. There's a TV. Well, Charmed, of course. That that led. You know, I had two years on that show, so it's great playing Belt of Swords. Great. But there's a TV show that I did called Nash Bridges. Was that with um, um uh, with Don with, Johnson? With Don Johnson yeah. and Cheech Marin. So cool. from Cheech and Chong. So I played a character named Captain uh, Captain Willis in Traffic. That was a traffic cop. Cool. And uh, I, had a, I had a recurring character on that role, show, and I love that character. That was me. I it had so much fun doing that character. So those are the kind of characters I like. Yeah. You know, those those are my favorite ones. Ones I would like to be. First of all, I tell you the role that I want to be. Uh, I think any any guy who plays a bad guy or plays tough guys, I want to be James Bond's next villain. Nice. That's what I want to be. I want, to, I want to do that. Yeah. I want you know. I don't care what it is. I want to be a villain in uh, like you know like uh, hat. Was that guy with the hat? hat was that, was Odd, job. Odd, Odd job. Odd job. Yeah. Or <laughs> whatever you know. I want. I want to be that. So um, what else? I was up for. Um, I read for Avatar. The one, one I didn't get that, of course, but uh, the guy who got it, I know, is a great, talented actor. Um, he, he's a lot smaller than me, so I think that's probably a size situation. But uh, uh, that'd be good to get some residuals off that one. Um, and uh, uh, another film I'd like to be, I'd like to have been in. Hmm. I don't know. I I, I don't know. Really, give, really give me your favorite films. Give me three of your favorite films that you like to watch. Oh, that's different. Uh, Aliens, yeah. sequel okay. to Alien. Aliens. Uh, nice. I love that. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. I love it. Love it. Uh, another one. Um, <laughs> here we go. Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. This, that's I love that's it. With, with, with my uh, and then uh, uh, what else? Um. Those are the ones that really stand out for me. Uh, I like movies just go from point A to point B very fast, yeah. and wrap there... around action and tell a good story. And that's what I try to write like that. I awesome. want I want uh, emotional action. Is what I want. So and you know I what? Like they're them. they're the ones that that people really enjoy because, like you say, you don't have to get so emotionally involved in something like that. You can enjoy well, what's there. You know. Yeah, and the thing is, is that too when I write. You know, because uh, as an actor, a lot of it's subjective, right? So you could be the mm. best actor walking the room, and the casting director doesn't like you, or the director doesn't like you, whatever. Even though you're a good actor, just just like your look, or whatever, right? Mm. But as a writer, it's what you put on the the page. So you're only judged by that, and so you're not judged by how you look. You're too tall, too short, too fat, too skinny, whatever it is. You look like my sister's asshole, bo- you know, boyfriend or whatever. It's none of that stuff, right? <laughs> so it's about what you put on the page, and I want to write movies 
that when you finish reading my script or watching it, that you still think about that the next day, the next week. Yeah. How many films do you know? Most of the films I watch are, like I watched, saw Top Gun. You know, I saw Top Gun. I like that film. Yeah, it's, it's popcornish, but it, like the second one, I, I liked it. You still thought about it the next day, going, damn, that was a pretty good movie. You miss those types of movies. And that's the kind of things that I want to write, and that's like why I want to produce things I want to be into that leaves the audience thinking about that the next day, you know, um, the next week. Like, I, love Transformers and things like that, but great, great ride. But when I walked out, I walked out. I was done. I, mean, I didn't yeah, think about it anymore, you know. So, Shawshank like, yeah. Redemption, different story. Aliens, Absolutely. different story. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the, uh, there's been there's been a couple of those this year. Um, the Black Phone seems to be the one that has got everybody going on and remembering things that happened in it. I don't know if you've seen it yet. What is it called? The Black Phone, the new Ethan Hawke movie. The Black Phone. Phone. The Black Phone. No, I have not seen that. That's one to go and watch. Okay, I will. I will. I will. I'm yeah. trying to go to the movies next week. Like that, so. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I think it's on video on demand for yourselves. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what service it's on, but uh, as far as I know, black phone. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll look for that. I think, I think, I think we'll uh, we'll let let himself go, will we? Absolutely, uh, Michael. It's been an absolute honor, and I mean that most sincerely, to have a Thank chat you. with you and, and to listen to some stories, and to you know, I, one thing I do want you to do, I want you to do a bit of homework this time. That's if you <laughs> haven't if you haven't seen this program already. I'd like you to check out a British program called Extras. Have you ever seen it? I have not. Okay, I'm sure you're you're very familiar with Ricky Gervais, yeah? Of course, of course. Yeah. So this is a show that he did a couple of years ago, and uh, it's a few seasons long, and it's about the you know the guys who are the extras and not the stars. Okay. So it's very funny, and if you can get to check that out, check it I will out do that. and let I me know what that. you think of it, okay? I will do that, and you know, uh, I'm, 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 you know, thankful for your health, man, and uh, glad you, Thank you sir. got through your stuff. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I, the king lives on. <laughs> just, just uh, real quick about the same time you had a had that episode about a year and a half ago. I had pulmonary embolism in both my lungs. Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! In both, in both lungs, I had two large blood clots, and so, uh, and the doctor said I should not be standing here I should be dead so uh, that was wow. a, a year ago last this last January and so uh, like you you know been through some some stuff so uh, yeah 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 agreed love, stay agreed. stay strong much love brother I thank mean you we, 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 we have a lot more stuff to do in this life we're not ready to go absolutely yet, right? absolutely no. and then you got uh, the young guy there Greg so I know uh, yeah but well, he has no soul he's a redhead <laughs> so don't worry about it you know? no <laughs> He doesn't want me. He can't handle me. So I'm stuck here in the middle. <laughs> there you go. Right, right cool. listen, Michael. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get off the slab here now. Um, thanks very much for coming on. And Thank like you. like yeah, no, we'd love you to have you back if you if you'll come back at some point down the line. No worries. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe the next time. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually just talk horror rather than some of your work. So maybe some of your favorite movies or. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like talking oh, about no. all. The, I'd like to. The man's career is is amazing. So I like talking about. I could talk for hours. Uh, we can, we, we can absolutely play some videos. We can play some videos of on uh, share share screen and do some uh, yeah uh, stuff on YouTube. I found some old like old uh, video like TV shows and TV commercials I did that are funnier cool. than anything. I like love one with that. Tip, with Tim McGraw and Tug McGraw, a Bud Light oh, commercial cool. I did. Yeah, some funny. Awesome. Stuff. So, we we we'll definitely try and get that in the pipeline. Um, yeah. But I, I, I think as for now, um, we'll let yourself go and you, we'll um, we wish you all the best, uh, especially Thank with you. the new upcoming screenplays and, and anything else you're writing or anything you're, you're in the mood to act or not act, in the mood in casting for would be the right word. Um, you, anything else you want to add to that, Carl? And, and I'll come visit. I'm going to come to Dublin. Please do. Hit us up. We have I'm, a, sure, I'm sure we could find a pub. Oh, we'll bring yeah, him to the Hell for a club. Don't worry, that'll be fine. Yeah, ready. down to oh, do or down to Loftus Hall. <laughs> um, it, it's been an, it's been a fantastic com uh, conversation. Thank with you guys. I and, appreciate um, it. Yeah, absolutely. And look, everybody, check out Michael's 
uh, back catalogue. It's absolutely fantastic. But for now, um, we're out of here from on the slab. So don't forget, everybody, stay scared. Woo!